What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got a couple things I wanna talk about, nothing too specific, just a few things that have been on my mind and I think everyone watching this could probably benefit from or learn something from. First thing I wanna talk about is getting to the gym, staying fit and staying consistent. No matter what you think, it is not gonna be easy to get to the gym and stay consistent. It is not easy, it's not something that we just always want to go and do. There are days where I really do not wanna to go to the gym. Today was one of them. But something happened as soon as I got in there. As soon as I started working out, I, I, did, a, I did a little bit of stretching. I started out with uh, a few just barbell squats, no weight on the bars. I did 40 reps, 20, 20 sets each, two sets for 40 reps total. And just by doing that, just by warming up my legs and my glutes after driving for about an hour and a half and then putting some 45s on there and start really working out and start really pushing weight, once I started just, I just started getting into the motion, just, the music was good. Um, I, had my, my, I had my water with my BCAAs and just everything was good. It was a good workout. So the point is, it's not always, you never know what day is gonna be that day where you just get in there and kill it and just have an awesome workout. You never know what day it's gonna be. But the only way to find out, the only way to find out that today is gonna be that day is by going to the gym every single day, even on the days you don't wanna go. I promise you guys, get consistent, get going, three, four, five days a week. You gotta start somewhere, right? Gotta start somewhere. 30, 45, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour a day, build up that momentum, build up the amount of time that you spend in the gym, start getting consistent, and before you know it, it's just gonna be automatic. It's gonna be sec it's gonna be like second nature, you're just gonna keep on going because this is what you've now programmed yourself to do. It's now something that you have to do every single day. It's it's is it's as much of a second nature type of thing as brushing our teeth and taking a shower every day. It's as much of a second nature as the fact that we need to eat and we need to drink water. It will become such a strong habit that you physically and mentally must do it. So that's my, that's my first point. First thing I wanna talk about guys is start building consistency, start going to the gym regularly and before you know it, you'll be on a path and it'll just keep on cruising and you'll be in the gym all the time. The second thing I wanna talk about guys is people, friends of yours, who you think are your friends who aren't truly your friends. They're not the type of people who, you know, when you're not around, they don't defend your name. They don't treat you with respect when you're not around. They don't defend your name when you're not around. They're not kind to you or they take, it, they take uh, your kindness for weakness. If you know there's probably someone out there, a friend of yours, you have, might have an assumption of someone who's just not living up to the type of standards that they should as as you expect of a friend, or they're not living up to the standards that you give them. They're not repaying it the same way that you give them the same kind of respect and friendship. They're not giving it to you back the same type of way you, you give it, right? We all know that there's people out there and we give them chances to kind of, you know, pay it forward or, or, or pay the friendship back in return, but they're just not doing it. So if you have a hunch that there's someone out there who's not, who's not defending your name when you're not around, it's not someone you need to be friends with. It's better just to cut that person off, avoid them as much as you can. If it's someone that you work with and you, you, have, to, you have to interact with them every now and then on, on, a, on, a, on a business basis, do your best to just, do your best to deal with the environment that you're in, show respect while you're at work, but at the same time, keep your conversations to a minimum. Don't talk, any, don't talk about your personal life, your relationships or friends or things you're doing out, outside of work. Don't talk about those things anymore. Just keep your relationship with this person solely based on business and work and that's all. Try and keep it neutral in the work environment because you want to be able to maintain a neutral work environment. You don't want to cause problems there because that will just cause problems for yourself as well. But keep it business casual. Don't talk about your personal life. Don't talk about anything going on outside of work about your life anymore. Keep that conversation completely out of the conversation you have with it, with this coworker anymore. All right guys, here's my number three topic I wanna to talk about. There's three pieces to this and it, it revolves relationships. Uh, when you're trying to find the right spouse for yourself, there are three things in a spouse that I look for between the two of us in order to 
be good together. And I call them the three C's. I actually learned this from somebody you all might know, Steve Harvey. Uh, guy is a huge inspiration to me. But he said that in order to find the best partner for yourself, you need to have three, you need to have three things. You need to have compatibility, communication, and chemistry. Compatibility, communication, and chemistry. Those three things have to be rock solid in your relationship for your relationship to truly be wonderful together. And I have to admit, I have found that with the relationship I'm in right now with my girlfriend and I, we have one of the, not one of the best, it is by far the best relationship I've ever had with anyone. We are rock stars at all three of those levels. We both have great communication levels. We both, when it comes to communicating, when it comes to any types of conversation, disagreements, or things we, we have in common, things we want to talk about, it's always very good conversations. Our disagreements always end in a positive way. Um, our communication, we're great at talking about everything together. We're just, we always want to talk, share ideas, and, and get the other person's opinion. And we're not afraid to share what our opinions are and what our thoughts are. We're not afraid to share that with the other person because we know the other person is going to be open to our ideas and our feelings that we want to talk about. So that's one of the first things. Then the second thing is compatibility. You want to have a relationship with someone who you're compatible with. Do you live, eat, and lifestyles, are they relatively the same? Not We're not going to be 100% the same, but I'd, I, I would want to bet you're about 80 to 90% the same in compatibility as far as interests, hobbies, uh, nutrition, morals, respect, those types of things you want to be about 80 to 90 percent very compatible with in order to have a good relationship with someone. So what was it? Compatibility, communication, and chemistry. Chemistry, that's a big one. Chemistry, chemistry. How well do you flow together? How well are you, you know, your romance? How good is romance together? How well do you show her this type of love that she wants and how well does she show the type of love that you want to receive. You know, we're both, we're all different people. We don't give and receive love the same way. So it's important to find out how your spouse likes to receive love and let them know how you like to receive love. That's very important. So communication, compatibility, and chemistry are three very important things. And I would say if there's one more thing, if there's a fourth thing, it's trust. Guys, I've, I've, uh, I've had this issue before in past relationships where it was my fault for breaking the trust in the relationship. And one thing is for certain, once you bake, break the trust, once you break your spouse's trust in you, that's it. That's it. The amount of work that has to be done in order to rebuild trust in a relationship is damn near impossible. It'll net your relationship will never be the same again because that person is always going to wonder in the back of their mind what's going on with you and what you're doing. You know, they're always going to be wondering when you're on your phone, when you're not answering your phone, when you're not around, when you're out doing something, they're always going to wonder and feel insecure about what you're really doing because you lied one time or they caught you in a lie one time. Honestly, just don't fucking do it. Uh, just don't do it, right? So trust is a huge thing, guys. So those are my three topics I want to talk to you guys about today. I hope that everyone liked this video. I hope everyone learned something from it. I hope that everyone practices some of the things that I talk about. Um, anyways, guys, if you like this video, if you like some of the things that I, that I spoke about in this video, um, and you like this kind of content, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe, as always. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.